haven't got a master plan or a I'm very kind of organic in the way I let it come come at me. You know, I ran away from home at 17 to be a punk rocker. Completely green. Yeah. I just wanted to go where that was happening. So I packed my bags and left with absolutely no idea of what I wanted to do. And I've just built a career around it, I suppose. And because I'm not classically trained in anything, and it always involved a heavy visual sense, especially on yourself or on other people. That's why I do do a bit of styling, a bit of jewellery. You know, if I haven't got it in my wardrobe, I'll make it. You know, it's very much, oh, let's use a, you know, safety pins, the classic, but I started using materials that were not thought of as accessories or clothing. I just used my creativity to plunder things from different areas and reinterpret it into a photo or a outfit for a club or a piece of jewellery for a shop. Or I mean, it's not the best way to go about it. I suppose one of my favourite times must have been when I did actually run away from home and it was 1977. And I came to London but didn't really know anyone in London. So I went to Manchester and it really had its own scene going on up there. So it was kind of freedom for me that, so I was really happy then, even though I didn't know what I was going to do. It was a time of great kind of, everyone was experimenting and changing their look and listening to new sound. And that was a great time. And then that, of course, when I, by the time I got back, I got to London, it was part of the new romantic time and that's really when I became much more aware of fashion from like, you know, Blitz and all those kind of clubs. Low points. Well, I was idiot enough to become a heroin addict through part of my career and that was a bit low. And I wouldn't advise it on anyone. It didn't stop me working, but it kind of stopped me. I think I was quite unhappy and it just helped shield it. So that was a big mistake. One of the first people I worked with was a designer called Anthony Price. And Anthony had seen me trolling around heaven or something, wearing all these mad pieces of jewellery, and asked me to do his show. And I, at the time, I was only making jewellery for myself. It was the first time I was working with a big makeup artist and big models, and it was a big number at Camden Palace. You know. So I suppose Anthony kind of kick-started me into thinking a bit more seriously about fashion. Before I worked with Anthony, I just thought it was like dressing up, going out, causing trouble. I think every designer or artist loves to have one, someone around who inspires them, and I'm really lucky with that. Uh, when I first started, it was a glorious girl called Scarlett Napoleon Bordello. And we used to wear, I used to make jewellery for her. Me and Scarlett used to have these dresses David Hola made for us. Like these mad chemise dresses he made. Really cheap, well, 25 quid for the dress. So we had like two of those and then I'd make a new piece of jewellery each week. That's how it kind of got going. <laughs> Well, her full name was Scarlet Napoleon Bordello. That's I don't helpful. think she was born with it. <laughs> it was when we were all inventing names in the early 80s. 
she was the one that actually came up with the blame. Oh, yeah? Mm. Carrie's got a question, Judy. Mm. What's your real name? Bugger off. <laughs> <laughs> I adore children as well. So I've got quite a lot of godchildren that are all different ages now. Because I love the way that they look at things. When they come to the studio or something, it's like a candy store for them. So I just encourage them to make something. Or I think I'm quite childlike in the way I approach things. There's a simplicity to it. I've got an ear thing. I'm not sure whether it's a fetish, because I've never met anyone else that has it. They don't have to be big, but ears just send me. And in Brazil, they do have fabulous little ones. All the boys have these little ones that curve around. What attracted you to the safety pin? It's just such a genius piece of design. And if you use them in volume, you can really make a piece of armour out of it. Well, there was two pieces that I made when I first started, and I was, didn't have a clue. And one, I found these brilliant big black wooden beads. They were quite big. And I did four strands of them that kind of fitted into each other. So it's like your whole chest was just these big, fat, wooden, black, shiny beads. And then another piece I made was out of string. And I dyed it, and I dyed it, and I dyed it, and it all stuck together. And then I started tying it up. And it, we used to call it the Doctor Who necklace. All it was was dyed string tied. It looked like some mad kind of coral or something. But in fact, it was just string from Woolworths. So someone wants to know about the day that you shot someone's man-child video? Oh yeah, Nana Cherries. Nana? Well, that was a little piece of heaven. Uh, it was with Jean-Baptiste Mondino. Almost all the characters in it are family. And he shoved me in it as well, which was a bit unfortunate. me next to Barry Kamen. Thank you very much, Jean-Baptiste Mondino. All the kids, everyone did everything in one take. I took about eight. <laughs> what was your first big fashion editorial feature? Um, it was for ID, and it was called Stolen Property. And there was a fabulous model around at the time called Jenny Howarth, and Mark Le Bon was supposed to have done the pictures. And Jenny arrived, and I couldn't believe that I got Jenny, because she was a big international star at the time. Jenny came in one Sunday, and Mark ended up giving Jenny the cameras, because she's a genius photographer as well. So I had to call up Scarlett, Go, Scarlett, what are you doing? Can you get the bus over now? Without a model, so me and Scarlett ended up modelling it while Jenny took the pictures. So. I haven't done an editorial for a while, but I've got like three in my head that need to be done. So I'm still researching on that. I know the kind of photographers I want to approach. I like to take time to think about it because you don't always have that luxury, but I'm a great believer in research. Because when I first started, I didn't know anything about fashion, so I made it my kind of thing to research every... I mean, I do it with things like this, like these ideas books, where I just pull out every month or so. I keep a record, it's like a dictionary for me of all things that have caught my eye. Judy, what was the hardest handmade order you've ever made? 
Mark Jacobs asked me to do something for Louis Vuitton, which of course I was thrilled about. So I went over to Paris and they had this really dodgy kind of denim that they wanted me to customise. So I came up with this idea of like putting lace and buttons on one lot and then like silver and chains on another lot. And we were only going to do like 20 pieces or something for the stores. But then in the end, it kept on creeping up. And we had to make hundreds of pieces. It wasn't a nightmare working for Louis Vuitton. It was great, in fact. So, nightmare job? Um, oh, it's got to be some pop star I didn't want to do in the first place. Shame I can't tell you the Jerry Halliwell story because I signed a confidentiality clause. <laughs> Someone wants to know why you look so brown. Have you been away? No, it's these pills I'm on for my... Because uh, I've been ill and they give me these, like, blood circulation pills. Really? I'm sure it's that. And I can't really do makeup. Because if I put makeup on, it tends to end up on everyone else's face and not mine. So people get really annoyed with you. When my mother used to get dressed in the 60s, and when I was really quite young, like from four, all through, we lived in Spain, till about 11, I always used to comment on her clothes and go, oh no, mother, <laughs> not that nail varnish with those shoes. And, and then we lived in Spain in the 60s, and I remember my cousin, she looked like um, Lynn Redgrave in Georgie's Girl, that 60s film. And she arrived in Spain, to, uh, she came on holiday to Spain when we were living there, and she wore a mini skirt like in 66 or something, 67. And it just caused a riot in Spain because it was quite, you know, still under General Franco and very Catholic. And, and she, this kind of plumpish kind of English girl, stomping through the Spanish village where we lived in a miniskirt, it just caused a riot. And I thought, how fabulous that a piece of clothing could cause so much trouble. <laughs> I go with the flow and I still enjoy doing it. I kind of enjoy waking up every day to either make something or... I still enjoy it. And with me, I do go through ups and downs a bit with it. But I've worked with some such great people, so you've got to learn to be inspired by other people, really. Right, I'm off to the pearly king and queen bowl. <laughs> yeah.